Welcome to the Rocky Mountain Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash R-M-A-C-A-C. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from California Lutheran University. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Sorry about that. It took me a hot second to find my camera and mute button, but welcome everyone. My name is Diana Hernandez. I am an admission counselor here at the Office of Undergraduate Admission at California Lutheran University. Cal Lutheran is located in Thousand Oaks, California, right between Santa Barbara and Los Angeles. As we look at a, at a, at a glance of Cal Lutheran, we'll see that we have just over 3,000 undergraduate students with an average class size of 17 and a 15 to one faculty to student ratio. So this is definitely a place where our professors will get to know you. They will take an interest in your academic journey. They wanna be part of it. There's a lot of opportunities for you to get mentored by our faculty that are still very active in the field and really be able to develop and grow into that career that you want the most. We are a pretty diverse campus. We do have a large amount of faiths represented. We are California Lutheran University. There is no hiding. We have a religious affiliation. However, we feel like religion is a get to, not a have to. And so you have that opportunity, but it's not something that is forced upon you or that you have to take. As you can see, we do have 39 different faiths represented. And we also do have faculty, students, and staff that have no religious affiliation and they love Cal Lutheran just the same. Cal Lutheran also proudly became a Hispanic serving institution in 2018. And that is something that we're really able to take advantage of to really continue to serve, or to serve all of our students that come from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds. Experiential learning is something that's really important to us as an institution. We'll highlight just three ways. One of those is through study abroad, where you can do research and internships while you're abroad and be able to be part of those international programs. Internships in over 500 different areas, including big NBC, big names like NBC, CBS, Disney, Amgen, just to name a few, but also local mom and pop shops as well. So whatever area it is that you're interested in doing, you definitely have the opportunity to do it here as well as doing research. This is something every single one of our majors can participate in and even have the opportunity to work, like I mentioned before, directly with our faculty to really be able to dive into that research. Living on campus is really important, especially for all of you watching since we are in California. And so we do have some of the nicest residence halls in California. There is no communal restroom that you go down the hall and share with everyone on your floor. Dining on campus is pretty great. There's four opportunities for students to use their meal plans, including Omen Commons. That is an all you care to eat buffet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that you'll see pictured down at the bottom right. We also do have Jamba Juice, Starbucks, as well as the Habit on campus. We do have guaranteed housing and parking for our students all four years. There is, of course, free Wi-Fi and free laundry on our campus as well. So you don't have to pay to be able to do your laundry while you're out here, which is great because it definitely does add up. Now, in terms of applying, we are Common App exclusive. So that is the only way to apply for admission. We'll require your official high school transcripts and an academic letter of recommendation. This letter of recommendation does need to be from a teacher or a counselor. You'll see there listed our averages. And something else I wanna point out is that Cal Lutheran is test optional. So if you have those test scores and you wanna send them our way, please feel free to do so. But if you don't, um, or maybe you don't wanna send them over, that is completely okay as well. So your application will still be reviewed exactly the same. There is no docking or anything along those lines. It won't be held against you if you don't submit those test scores. You'll also see our averages. These are just averages for our admitted students. We admit higher and we admit lower every year. We do a holistic review, meaning we will read everything that you submit to be able to determine admission. We have two deadlines. The first is November 1st, which is our early action deadline. And the second is January 1st regular decision. For either one of these deadlines, you will automatically be considered for academic scholarships that could go up to full tuition. And the normal academic scholarships that either deadline will be considered for can go up to $25,000. That presidential scholarship, you are required to apply by November 1st. 
We also do have public price promise where if you're admitted into one of the select UCs, there, it's all on our website. So there's six UCs where if you are admitted into any one of those six, we will go ahead and match their average cost of attendance. So this means coming to the cost of Cal I'm sorry, coming to Cal Lutheran for the cost of a public school. We also do have visual and performing arts scholarships. These can also go up to full tuition. There is a separate application and audition and interview process. So we'll definitely want to get started on that as soon as possible. You can visit www.calutheran.edu slash VAPA for more information, as well as congregational partners in education. So if you're part of any religious institution and they award you with a scholarship, we will match, match it up to $2,500. There is a total kind of cost of attendance that you'll see listed there. I always like to share with students, don't let the cost of any school or the sticker cost of any school scare you away from applying because the first step is to apply. Then you'll go ahead and apply for financial aid and then we'll be able to see what the actual cost for you to attend that institution will be. Over 97% of our students do receive some sort of financial aid. And so again, just make sure that you do submit that application. If you do have any questions, this is the general admissions line. We are more than happy to help answer those questions. Even, though, even if they're not Cal Lutheran specific, you're welcome to send them over and we'll be able to help guide you in your college search process. What I'll also be doing is putting my contact information in the chat, as well as an opportunity for you to do some virtual tours. And these virtual tours are live with some of our students. This will definitely allow you um, an opportunity just to see campus a little bit before being able to fly out here safely to see it in person. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Soka University of America. Thank you all so much for having me. Hopefully my screen loads here. It did. My name is Aaron. I work in the Office of Admission here at Soka University of America. We're located in South Orange County, still here in Southern California. Um, not too, too far from Cal Lutheran. We look kind of rural here in the photo and that's because we do have a uh, regional park that surrounds the university. We are a private nonprofit liberal arts university. The of America distinction is because we do actually have a sister school in Tokyo, Japan, where our uh, educational sort of foundation did get its start. Um, but I'm talking about just the, our Southern California uh, campus here. SOCA is really a, a mission-driven university, not a tuition-driven university, in that everything that we do here is really centered around this mission statement to foster a steady stream of global citizens committed to living a contributive life. For us, a global citizen is somebody who has these three attributes. Uh, it's great to see the, these attributes in our applicants, but realistically, we hope to develop them in our students as they are admitted, matriculate, and then of course um, graduate from from SOCA. And so this is really kind of the, the type of person we're looking for: someone who's who's service oriented and wants to give back to some community uh, of of the world. In in a sense, we offer the Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Arts. We're pretty pretty small, uh, roughly 450 total undergraduate students. About 40 percent of them are international, coming from all over the world. We are a residential campus, fully accredited. We have our five concentrations, which I'll get into in the next slide. Study abroad is gonna be a requirement for us. So everybody's gonna go abroad and everyone's gonna take a language. We have a seven to one student to faculty ratio, average class size of about 12. We're in the NAIA, we have merit as well as need-based financial aid, which I'll, I'll get into towards the end. And um, yeah, some pretty great rankings, which is pretty unique for uh, a young university. We opened up back in 2001. So this is all really new stuff still. What we have in terms of uh, course offerings and, and your your degrees and what you can expect to study here, math and science or general education requirements are going to be a standard. Of course, at the end of your second year, you would actually determine your concentration. So you don't have to come in and automatically know what you want to do right out the gate. At SOCA, we let you kind of bounce around the catalog and figure out what it is you're really drawn to, and then go ahead uh, and take advantage of of that concentration offering. With the exception of our life sciences concentration, that's really your pre-health, pre-med track. And you pretty much have to know at the end of your first year whether or not you want to take that sort of path because we are prepping you for med school um, to, to apply and of course be successful and, and pass that MCAT. So everything else is really traditional liberal arts uh, education, which is pretty unique. The um, one cool caveat is, again, that that study abroad program is a requirement and therefore is included in your cost of tuition at SOCA. So uh, your tuition money pays for your flight out, your flight back, visa, transportation, housing, and meal stipend, which is uh, 
pretty substantial. We offer Spanish, French, Japanese, and Chinese. You'll take one of those four languages and then your third year you are abroad in a respective speaking country, pretty much in a full immersion program um, within that respective target language. So super unique. Programs last anywhere between four to six months long. So a lot of fun. Residential campus, our first year hall is pretty standard double layout. So you'll share a common space. And then beyond that, we have what's called a split double. Everyone here at SOCA does have their own bathroom with their roommate that they, they share space with. Pretty standard stuff, Wi Fi is there. Um, your room and board does include your meal plan as well. So everybody's on the exact same meal plan here at SOCA. Um, community kitchen, laundry, all that good stuff. Better photos online. I don't. I didn't get a ton in this this shorter program. Um, tons of clubs and activities for you to get involved with and sort of grow outside of the classroom. Just a brief overview of our university sponsored athletics that we offer, and then the facilities that we have down there in Aliso Viejo. Financially, it's really great at SUA. So we are a private institution, therefore, um, in state versus out of state, it's not going to matter. Much like Calu. Um, for us, tuition alone, 32250 32, room and boards another 13032 What's really great about us as well is that parking is free, printing is free, laundry is free, everything is right there wrapped into your tuition. Uh, and all students now receive a MacBook Pro when they're admitted and they keep them when they graduate. So there isn't a lot of nickel and diming um, with us at, at either, which is pretty substantial. Uh, the most, I think, well-known opportunity that we offer is really the, the Opportunity Grant, which looks at the student's family's earned income. So if a family makes $60,000 or less, tuition is actually free for that student. And 60,001 all the way up to 200,000, that then becomes a sliding scale where on average students receive somewhere between 26,000 to maybe $28,000 to apply towards their tuition money to help bring that cost down and, and make sure that no one's really paying sticker price. I think only about 2% of our population pays the full tuition and room and board because their families are are pretty well off. So uh, how do you get in? Pretty standard application process, $30 fee for online. We're a Common App member school, and then we have our own um, SOCA-sponsored application. Uh, early action of November 1st and regular decision of January 15th. We're also test optional as well. So um, I'll leave my email there and I can drop it in the chat later. I'm the Southern California as well as I help out with Vermac Act um, respective uh, locations as well. So that's going to do it for me. I see that um, my time's running short. I'm going to go ahead and stop there and stick around for questions later. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from the University of San Francisco. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is April Crabtree. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the Assistant Vice Provost for Undergraduate Admission at the University of San Francisco. So I want to take just a few minutes to give you uh, the very best of the overview that you can have to understand USF just a little bit better as you're starting your college search. So first, a little bit to frame us up a little bit about uh, who are we, where are we, how big are we, those sorts of things help you get some sort of sense of the university experience. We are a medium-sized institution. We have about 6,600 undergraduate students at USF. We also have about another four or 5,000 students in our graduate programs and our law school as well. So when we talk about the university, we talk about the variety of course offerings, we talk about diversity, we talk about a lot of these things, uh, but it goes back to being still being a community. And despite having about 6,600 undergraduate students, our classes still stay pretty small. The average class is gonna be about 21 or 22 people, which gives you good insight into the expectations that we're gonna have of you on how you should interact with class, but also how your education is going to be delivered to you. So still expecting that small classroom experience with lots of connections with faculty, with other staff, and with students. The three things that I really want you to walk away with today as you're thinking about USF is first of how we teach. What it, why is it important that we do what we do? And that's based on who we are. We're a private Jesuit university. So that Jesuit foundation really guides all the questions we ask ourselves and we're asking you to ask of yourself, no matter what it is that you're choosing to study looking at relationships of power, looking about looking at uh, issues of social justice in our communities, in our country, and in our world, and figuring out how you can be an agent of change. And that really guides everything in our conversations, whether you're in the sciences, whether you're studying business, whether you're studying the arts, 
those questions about power, those questions about change, and how can we be better people for others as part of this journey. It really very much is a mission-driven institution and a part of the conversation you're going to have from the very first day until well after you graduate. The second thing that it's important to remember about us is that we are located in the city of San Francisco. So our relationship with San Francisco uh, has been very long and we are very much reflections of one another. So over the course of USF's history, you can see how we have changed and responded to the city we're in and what opportunities that brings you. So as a student, you're going to have this amazing social playground, this great laboratory, for yourself as you're exploring these and really wrestling with the topics of our time. And at the same time, this is also a place for internships, a place for research, for all those opportunities we talk about that happens outside the classroom. And additionally, this is going to be a place that is a social experiment, a social opportunity for you as well. One of the things that I love about USF students is they sort of talk interchangeably about their lives as USF students and also as San Franciscans. So this truly great opportunity to live in one of the most interesting cities in the country for those few years that you're in college is certainly something that attracts students to USF and something that they always remember about their experience as well. But at the same time, we still do actually have a physical campus in the middle of the city, this 55 acre campus that gives you that sense when you step on onto our, uh, on, onto our campus that you are in what you're, you are probably envisioning as your college experience. Our housing, our, uh, our labs, our administrative buildings, everything is right there on campus within easy walking distance as well. We have housing on campus. We guarantee that for two years for all of our first year students. And then after the first two years, about 30 or 40% of our students remain on campus and other students will look for housing outside in the city of San Francisco. The third thing that's really important to get a sense of who we are is uh, just that we like to make sure that everyone understands that how committed we are to diversity. We are the fourth most diverse institution in the country. Uh, this is uh, done through IPEDS classification, so all the data that we have as students self-disclose race and ethnic information. So this becomes a way for you to start to get a sense of those small classes that you're having. Who is in those conversations? What experiences there are they bringing? What perspectives have they had in their lives? So in addition to racial diversity on campus, we have great geographic diversity as well. Uh, we also have students who come from a large variety of different backgrounds as well. About a third of our students are the first in their families to go to college, something I'm proud of because I was the first in my family to go to college. About a third of our students come from lower income backgrounds as well. So the ways that those conversations take shape in the classroom are really about these lived experiences that our students have had. One of the questions that I often get is about the Jesuit Catholic connection that we have and do you have to be Catholic? No, only about 30% of our students self-identify as Catholic. Students come to USF with a wide variety of spiritual or faith traditions or no tradition at all because they're attracted to this humane nature, this Jesuit philosophy that I was sharing with you a little bit earlier. Academically, USF, USF offers 44 majors and our College of Arts and Sciences, our most popular majors are biology, communication, international studies, computer science, and psychology, as well as some really interesting majors uh, that are distinct to USF, critical diversity studies, performing arts and social justice. One of my favorite, uh, more innovative majors in that college is also our data science program as well. So lots of ways to really engage in new and interesting ways. In our School of Management, a lot of uh, management programs, hospitality, but also an entrepreneurship and innovation program as well. So if you're a student interested in starting your own business, this is a program you definitely want to take a look at. Probably the program we're most well known for is in our School of Nursing and Health Professions. Our nursing program is highly competitive. It's the most high, it's mostly competitive major at USF as well. We offer over 70 minors. We have a fantastic honors college that gives you this opportunity to have more enriching conversations, more depth in your in your, uh, in your field of study, as well as a truly remarkable career services program as well. I'm not gonna go into all the dates and deadlines. You'll get that from us later and I'll be in the chat. I'll drop some important links down for you now. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Santa Clara University. All right, everyone. Thank you all for joining us this evening, um, but excited to be here with you all. My name is Lorenzo Gamboa. I am the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Santa Clara University, the oldest university in the state of California. We were here since uh, admission in 1777 and became a university in 1851. So long tradition, a long history, and a lot of opportunities here. 
We actually do sit on the ancestral lands of the Ohlone, Ohlone Muwekma tribe and people who trace their ancestry to the Lotus Mission, Santa Clara and San Jose. So we do actually like to thank them for allowing us to live, work, learn, and pray on their traditional homelands. So we do acknowledge and thank their elders of today, uh, the past and the future. The one thing that does make Santa Clara pretty unique is our location geographically located right in the heart of Silicon Valley, right next to the city of San Jose, about an hour south of my colleagues at USF, about an hour south of them, and about 45 minutes to uh, the ocean of Santa Cruz. So really nice geographic location, but also the land of opportunity. Here, your neighbor is Google, Yahoo, Lockheed, eBay, NASA, Shenyang, KBMY, Pricewaterhouse, Deloitte, Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Tesla, Electronic Arts, NVIDIA, you name it, it is here. We are pretty blessed. We currently have more job offers, more internship offers than actually current students enrolled at Santa Clara University. We do strive to make sure that it's very diverse. So as you can see, almost a 50-50 split of in-state and out-of-state and international students. So come out, check it out. The one thing that did really draw me to this campus is not only the Jesuit philosophy, but definitely the palm trees, the weather, and then realizing I woke up winter quarter and did not have to shovel snow. But it is a really blessed location because yes, as a Jesuit institution, we like to challenge you mentally, spiritually, physically, but also at the end of the day, just ask you the big question of, so what? You're gonna walk the stage, you're gonna be an engineer, you're gonna be a business person, you're gonna be an artist. So what? What are you gonna do with this God-given talent and how are you gonna help others? Like my colleague mentioned, did you have to be Catholic to attend Santa Clara? No, but about 50% uh, of our student body says they're Catholic, 50% comes from every other denomination. I do see the numbers switch every once in a while, especially during finals week when everybody's praying to pass the class. But other than that, it's a pretty welcoming and open experience for everybody. We do encourage everyone to be participants of immersion programs, study abroad and community-based learnings because Jesuits really believe that once you get down and dirty with your education, that's when you really find out about your opportunities of contribution. So these are just some examples of images, but we are not a big campus. We're not a small campus either. We currently have about 5,500 undergraduates studying at Santa Clara University, about 3,000 grads on top of that. I am trying to grow to 6,000 by 2025. So that's an opportunity for you all to take advantage of the extra admission rate. 11 to 1 student faculty ratios with average classes 23 to 24, an extremely high retention rate, which we are extremely proud of, but also the opportunity to graduate definitely in four years, not five, not six, not seven, but four. And the reason that I'm not over 90% is because my business, my engineers who like to mess up my numbers. Why? Because those students get the opportunity to add on what we call the four plus one, and they can stay on and in five years get a master's, bachelor's degree. So I invite them to continue messing up my number. Other than that, it's a really good opportunity for anybody who wants to get down and dirty with the opportunities of getting to be known as a student here at Santa Clara. You will not be a number. This is a place where they will know you by first name and get you to get involved with anything and everything it is that you wanna do, whether it be in the arts, whether it be in the sciences or in business, which Santa Clara is also known for. But don't forget, we were founded as a liberal arts institution. So please get involved with everything. Other than that, we are 20 division one sports, 19 club sports and over 150 clubs and organizations. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for passionate individuals who are not willing to uh, settle. They wanna push the envelope. They wanna get involved with their research, push our faculty and staff to be better individuals, but at the same time, be flexible enough to go paint your face, get on ESPN every once in a while. There is a two year housing policy in Santa Clara now, first year, second year, 100% of you will be on campus. Other than that, uh, you guys have the option to stay on all four years if that's what you choose to do. And um, see everything from the traditional two beds, two desks, community bathroom down the hall to the sweet styles if that's what you wish, okay? Traditions, and then again, don't forget, we are in the Bay Area, so you will come and see the world here. This is where everybody, every culture, every language, and for me, all the food that you can taste with an access of 24 hour, 27, 24 hours, seven days a week here at Santa Clara University. We are only on the Common App. All you have to tell me is if you wanna do arts and science, business or engineering, we are direct entry into our programs. So no need to worry about what else you wanna do, just apply and then we'll get you into them. Right now, the most popular majors are communications, counseling, psychology, political science, business, it's accounting, finance and marketing and engineering, it's civil, mechanical and biomedical engineering. But we are Silicon Valley, so computer science is extremely popular here. 
but we offer it in all three schools. So contemplate on what it is that you want to do um, and let us know how we can help you, okay? Our application deadlines are coming up, November 1st for early decision, early action, January 7th for regular decision, and ED2, right? If you have other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You can connect with us on all virtual platforms and let us know how we can, again, help you with this next adventure. Thank you very much for your time and opportunity. We look forward to answering some questions. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Holy Names University. Perfect, thank you very much. Okay. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Gabriel Ching. I am coming in from Holy Names University. Um, if you haven't heard of Holy Names University before, it's totally okay. We're a very, very small private Catholic university in the heart of Oakland, California. Um, like some of my colleagues have said, the Bay Area is a very diverse place where you'll be able to experience so many new things and meet so many new people and really get an enriching uh, next three to four years of your life when you choose a college in the Bay Area. So let's go ahead and begin. Like I said, Holy Names University is located in Oakland, California. Um, if you're looking at this picture currently right now, this is our view of the Bay. We currently look out into Oakland, Alameda, and then San Francisco out into the distance. If you look really hard, you'll also be able to see USF out there too. Um, if you're looking for our school, our school is at the bottom right-hand corner of this picture, right on top of this hill. So like I said, that's a really pretty million dollar view of the school. Um, we have been located in Oakland since about 1868, so we do have our own traditions for our school as well. Um, our students love to be able to travel throughout Oakland as we're minutes away from downtown Oakland. We're about 25 minutes away from there, about 30 to 35 minutes away from San Francisco without traffic. Uh, if you're looking to go to San Francisco in traffic, just imagine you driving to LAX or any other airport or during heavy traffic, and you'll pretty much get that experience. Other than that, with the diversity of the Bay Area, you'll be able to enjoy food from numerous different um, ethnic backgrounds. I think about five to seven minutes away from our school, we have numerous Asian influenced food, great Mediterranean food, Ethiopian food, a lot of taquerias within the Bay Area as well. So there's many, many new activities and experiences that you can enjoy here in Oakland and in the Bay. Here's a little snapshot of Holy Names. We are a very small school. In fact, we only have about 1,014 students currently enrolled in our programs. Because we only have that many students, you're about to see an average classroom to faculty, a student to faculty ratio of just about eight to one. So eight students to one faculty member, meaning you will be able to build those personalized relationships with those with your classmates, with staff members, with professors. And honestly, it's a very common occurrence for staff members and the faculty members to go outside of their jobs and to really help you out in any way and shape that we can. Um, if you're also looking for a diverse school, according to US News and World News, Holy Names is actually ranked within the top 10 most ethnically diverse campuses in the Western region. So yes, you will be able to meet students from all different cultures around the world. And yes, we do not have any impacted majors as of this year. Um, if you're looking to dorm on campus, we do have four dorm halls, uh, Dunn, Durashe, Fihen, and Founders. Founders would be a dorm hall for any student over the age of 21. Um, Dunn, Durashe, and Fihen would be for all of our undergraduate uh, students. Inside all three, until, inside Dunn and Durashe, you'll be able to get singles and doubles. Inside Durashe and Feehan, you'll be able to get suites. And inside Founders, you'll only be able to get singles. If you're curious to know what those rooms are, within a single room, you'll be by yourself. Within a double room, you'll have one roommate. And within a suite, you'll be in a room with about two to three students in a traditional year, of course, uh, pre-COVID, um, depending on how big that that suite is. Um, like I said, all of this is pre-COVID. I do have, uh, we do have restrictions right now due to shelter in place. I'd be more than happy to answer those questions after this time. Um, within all of our dorms, we do have common spaces. These common spaces can be like living rooms with TVs, with ping pong tables, billiard tables. We have about two to three bath outdoor basketball courts on campus, as well as many, many barbecue areas that our students love to utilize before COVID as well. Um, every single dorm hall does come with its own laundry room and all of our laundry machines are credit card accessible. And our within our housing cost is also included our meal plan. Just to give you a little inside secret, but our meal plan cost is the exact same for both meal plans. So at that point, it's really uh, dependent on what you prefer best. Here's a list of all of our majors. And um, if I were to, if someone were to ask me what our top five majors at our school were, I would definitely say nursing, biology, kinesiology, uh, business, and education, just because we were founded upon nursing and education. We actually do have quite a bit. Uh, we, have, we have a few new majors and programs starting in fall 2021. We actually just added a computer science concentration, as well as a full ethnic studies major. Back in the day, ethnic studies used to be a concentration. Also, for any students interested 
interested in becoming a chiropractor. Uh, Holy Names University is now partnered up with Life Chiropractic College West. Um, and throughout that college, our students will be able to graduate from Holy Names in four years with a bachelor's of science in kinesiology. And then immediately following that graduation, go off and get their doctorate at Life College, at Life Chiropractic West. So if you're interested in that program, definitely let me know. Here is a very, very small list of all of the academic resources you have on campus. You know, one of the best parts of Holy Names and one of the reasons why I attended Holy Names myself is because all of your academic resources are free. Aside from that, parking is free, printing is free, and you always have Wi-Fi as well. And my favorite service that we provide students here is actually through our counseling services as we provide every single new student and every single uh, returning student 10 free counseling sessions with our licensed therapists on campus. You'll be able to meet every single one of these departments as we are a school that wants to be able to help you in any way and shape and form we can. As it does say here, we are very big on social justice as we do have our own department specifically there to provide students with service opportunities to give back. And one of my favorite service opportunities we provide students is a alternative spring break trip that we have done once again before COVID um, where we would send students out to Tutwiler, Mississippi with a bunch of staff members as well. And that group of, of um, HNU representatives would work with Habitat for Humanity to build homes for the homeless. So if you're looking for an enriching experience like that, as well as uh, being able to really give back to the community. Holy Names would be a really, really, really great fit for you. We do have a bunch of student founded, led and run organizations. Here's a list of all of them right now, especially during COVID right now, our students are really pushing, uh, pushing forward their agendas and really wanting to, to provide more access, more um, stress-free types of environments just due to Zoom fatigue. I love our students for the sole fact that they are very determined and they love being able to put on new events. And honestly, our students are actually responsible for quite a bit of our programs that we do have. Really quickly, we are NCAA AA Division II school. So if you're interested in scholarship, please listen to this slide. A very easy way to apply. Our applications are always free. The only uh, document we're looking for are your transcripts. We do have a very, very generous scholarships and grants available. So if you're interested in learning more, please let me know. Here's my contact information and I will go ahead and pass it back off to Anna. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I just want to invite all of the reps to come back on and do a round of Q&A. Um, just answering in the same order you presented, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? I would tell students, and it's a little bit hard because of the pandemic we're all in, but I would sure to go visit the different schools that you're thinking about because it really will make a difference. Um, you'll be able to start interacting with students, faculty and staff and see if that is a place where you can see yourself in lieu of being able to visit in person, attend some virtual events, uh, take some virtual tours, really be as involved with the community as possible and try to get in touch with that faculty. Those faculty members will really make a difference for you all. Yeah, I think it's it's great that you all are starting so early. So I, I would encourage you to, to stay organized as you look towards application. I think, you know, every school has got a slightly different application process and could potentially have, you know, different uh, deadlines as well. So I think it's great to just stay organized, make sure that you don't miss deadlines, you you prioritize schools, you know, in a, in a matter in which you're going to be successful and um, just give yourself the best chance to, to complete, be reviewed, and, you know, just let the chips fall where they may. So yeah, stay organized. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I think I have two sort of related things to share in terms of tips or advice. And one of them is just a reminder that you have an interesting story to tell. I know a lot of students as they get ready, uh, particularly that summer as they're getting ready to, to write essays, uh, often have a moment of say, thinking, I don't have anything to say. You, you do. You have lots to offer. You're going to have so much to think about. Um, you're, you are a terrific candidate for college if that's where you want to be. So, uh, you know, going into the summer and going into the fall, I hope if, you're, if your junior is going to senior year, um, just to, to remember that you have a story to tell, be yourself, be authentic, be genuine when you have, uh, when, when you're going through the college application process. And I guess the other bit of, of advice I would say is to remember that however you're treated in the college admission process is likely how you're going to be treated as a student on that campus. So if you feel like you've been cared for, you've been listened to, your, your choices have been respected, then that's probably how you're going to be treated as a student. So this is a really great little window into what your student experience is going to be like at that college or university. And I would echo all of my uh, colleagues' comments, but I would say also don't sell yourself off short. 
this is a, a wonderful opportunity for you guys to explore and think outside the box and consider schools that you may have not ever heard of, uh, as you never know that you might be the best fit for some of these schools. Um, and never ever let that financial price tag be the looming factor of why or why not you apply to them. The last one that I could give on the enrollment side is apply early. Okay. Good luck. Um, all of my colleagues here have definitely said great answers. I'll definitely say, you know, reach out to us. We are always here for you. We are always here to answer any questions and there is no such thing as a bad question. We are here, this, what, that's why we're here. That's why we love what we do. Great, hey, um, I'm gonna ask another question too, just because we have enough time for it. So um, you could go all around again and just share your favorite event or tradition on campus. One of my favorite traditions on campus is this statue that you kind of see behind me. Um, the students nickname him Gumby, um, but really leading up to Gumby is just a giant space where there's the involvement fair where every single club and organization on campus at the beginning of each semester will set up a booth so new students are able to really engage with all of the different clubs at one time ask what type of events they do, why are they a club, what's important to them as a club, and join as many clubs as you can. I always tell students, sign up for all of them that interest you, and then really pick like three or four that you really want to get involved in. But especially as an incoming student, it's not a bad idea to know what's going on, what events are being put up by different clubs, and that's a great way to make connections. So the involvement there would be one of my favorite traditions that we do. We have a, a fair as well uh, on campus that typically takes place next month, May, uh, as we kind of look to, to round out the academic year. And we call it the International Festival, where we invite a lot of our community onto campus to uh, certainly share in cuisine that students are, are involved in, and as well as the, to sh showcase the clubs that, that exist on campus as well. Being that we're a younger university, it's been really great to, to see some of the, the older parts of, of Orange County come onto campus and just get to know the university, the students, and you know just have a really great day and sharing and culture uh, and experiences. And that's something that we hope can, can come back in the, the near future here. I would say my favorite campus tradition is, uh, is actually graduation because in addition to just the traditional graduation where we, we have this in the chapel, we have it in small groups where you can come in, you and your families. Uh, but we, our cultural centers also do a lot of small graduation recognition ceremonies. So whether that's lavender graduation for our LGBTQIA students, whether it's interwoven, our Latinx recognition ceremony, our black grad ceremony. Um, so really uh, getting a chance to, to celebrate in different ways prior to the big celebration. And this is always such a fun way to be on campus and just to see all these different communities coming together, all these different moments of celebration for what students have achieved. I would say for ours, it's uh, something called the Bronco Challenge or the Colorado Native Challenge, which I refer to it. But you wake up really, really early winter quarter, you go ski Tahoe, come back down, have dinner in San Francisco, come back down, have a bonfire in Santa Cruz, and the first person on the team that falls asleep, you baptize them in the Pacific Ocean. So go do it. Um, if I were to choose another event or tradition on our campus, it would actually be another one that our students started called Hawkmania. Uh, if that sounds very simi uh, similar to anyone, that is because it was completely uh, inspired by uh, WWE's WrestleMania event. What it is, it is a WrestleMania event where we work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And yes, we do hire professional workers, uh, professional wrestlers. They come in, they put a full on show with entrances, with drama, with actual matches in the ring. Um, and actually the cool part is our students and staff members are a part of their own matches. And yes, of course it is 100% safe. Everyone is trained to do it too. And actually within the past few years that we ran it, we we're actually very fortunate to be able to grant a few wishes every single year. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us. And uh, thank you for presenting. When you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. And we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for more. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session's recordings at strivescan.com slash RMA 
C-A-C. So thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your evening. Bye. Thank you, everyone.